Hey everyone, today we're going to be using Epiphany to pull in data from Cormac Cap. If you don't have Epiphany installed already, I've left a link down in the description below. Let's go ahead and open up Epiphany. We're going to pull up CoinMarketCap API documentation. So pull up CoinMarket.com, go to Products, Crypto API. So you will need an API key, and this is what pops up right here. So click on Get Your API Key Now, fill out the registration, click I'm an iRobot, create my account, and then you will get your API key. All right, so once you're logged in, this will be your developer dashboard. You'll see your API key on the upper left. And then you see your API key usage down below over here. And so this is on the basic free plan. So this is your credit limit here. And this is also will limit which endpoints you can use. And we'll get into that in a moment. Copy this key. We'll drop this in here. And then let's go ahead and go to the API documentation. So up at the top here, we see a quick start guide. And so for authentication, we need a custom header for the API key, and they tell you here, right here, custom header using X CMC Pro API key. So let's go ahead and drop this in here. Just like that. Now we can go ahead and get our API URL path. All right, so let's go ahead and click on cryptocurrency, and we'll see our API endpoints here. So these are all the ones that are available. However, there's a number of these that are not available in the free plan. So we're going to run through some of those real quick here. Uh, so for example, we have listing latest. And I'll show you under the first data, this endpoint is available. And so if it's available in the basic, it's available in the free plan. Otherwise, you will have to upgrade to access that endpoint. So for example, here, this listing is new. Um, recently, I had cryptocurrencies is only available on startup and up. Same thing with here, trending, gaining, losing, and so forth. Let's go ahead and start with listings latest. And we see here we have our endpoint URL right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then we're going to look at what we have available here. So what they use is what they call query parameters. And so this is what we're going to add on to the URL in our request. So we have things like start, and this is offsetting the index of the list of items. So for example, if you had a list of 10 items total, you needed offset of five, it would show six through 10. Limit is how many items, and so you can do anything between one and 5,000. If you don't specify, it'll be a default of 100. And again, the start default is one. And then here are a number of filters you can use to filter the list that you want to specify. So you can specify a minimum price of currencies you want to return, market cap min, market cap max, etc. All right, so we don't need any of these parameters to start with. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with this base URL here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it again. I'm going to go paste it here. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. And then we can look at adding parameters and how parameters work, which will be the same across any endpoint that you use. So we'll go ahead and click run. We're good to overwrite this one. Let's go ahead and dump that in there. So what it's currently doing is ranking by market cap, ranking in desetting order from largest to smallest. So we see all the data there. So let's look at adding some query parameters. Let's do sort by date added and then sort direction descending to get the newest coins added to coin market cap. So default is market cap. We need to change to date added. So what we need to do here is add a question mark and this will start our query parameters. And we want to do sort and then that is our name, as you can see here. And then we want to do equals a string of what we need. So equals date added. And then to add another parameter, we just use this and symbol. And then we're going to do sort direction. And then we're going to do descending. So you can go back and look at this. We can see sort direction. And then we have our values descending. 
and that is exactly how we need it. So it needs to match exactly there. We need to have these underscores and so forth. You can add more of this. Uh, if you want to do date added, sort direction, descending, you could then add even filters. You could do and uh, volume 24 max um, or volume 24 min if you want to see ones that at least have a certain amount of volume and so forth. And this is a uh, 24 hour USD volume. So we're just going to go ahead and run what we have right here. And we're just going to go ahead and overwrite what we have. And so here now we see the latest cryptocurrencies that were added to CoinMarketCap. So let's look at adding, let's do a volume 24 hour min. So I'm just going to actually copy this query parameter here. So I have to type it out. And then we're just going to select, let's look at what we have here to see our volumes. It should be over here, volume right here. So we see 250, we see some there less. Maybe we'll do a 500,000. So we go back up here. We're just gonna do and to add that new parameter and volume min equals 500,000. Let's go ahead and run that again. And now we're gonna see a smaller list without the small volume ones that we had there. So if we scroll over here, we're going to see that volume now is above 500,000. So you can do this as much as you want to add more filters. But in the meantime, let's go on to another endpoint. So let's go back to CoinMarketCap, see the ones we have available. So we have one here called Metadata, and this is going to give us different things of data about a coin. So let's go ahead and look at this. This is available on the basic free plan, so we'll be good to go. And we see that we have only a few parameters here. And one thing to note, so here we have ID, slug, and symbol. So in their best practices, they say use coin market ID instead of symbol. And the reason this is because there's a talk about here. There can be multiple cryptos with the same symbol. So this isn't going to be the issue with something like Bitcoin, but if you have some of the smaller cryptos especially, this may be more common. And so keep that in mind, and I'll show you one of the endpoints. We'll pull a map with that IDs. So let's go ahead and we're going to go here to metadata. We're going to use the symbol for Bitcoin. And one thing you'll notice is a lot of these, if they require or asking for a symbol, you can pass multiple ones using a comma. So we're going to go ahead and pull this up. So we'll grab our API endpoint URL right here. We'll throw this in. If we go back and look here, we'll pull symbol with BTC. So question mark symbol equals BTC. We got our header still there. And we're going to go ahead and run over this sheet again. And now what we'll see is we have our BTC metadata. So it has a description and all the other data there. So the next one we're going to look at is a map. So what we have here is cryptos to coin market IDs. So here we can see listing status is query parameter start, limit, sort, symbol, and auxiliary. So we can use a symbol if we want to find an ID for a specific symbol. Otherwise, we can sort by rank and ID and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and pull this one. Grab this URL. Throw this in here. And if we look at our defaults, our default start is 1. And we're going to go ahead and limit this to 5,000. And let's go ahead and sort by rank. So we can go ahead and throw this in here. Limit equals 5,000. And sort equals, I believe, what was it just rank? CMC rank. CMC rank. So this will return top 5,000. I'll take a second to load here. It's a little more data. <clears throat> and so is this looks like it's still working here. So what this is showing us now 
is we have the coin name, coin symbol, coin slug, and here's that ID if it is needed. So if you're not getting the correct data, this is the ID that you will want to be using. And so again, this query, there's not a bunch of options you can do here, but you can do sort by ID then too if you want, and I'll go one through whatever, or uh, the latest down to the most recent. Another thing to note is you can do this with just a symbol. So if we did, if we look here, we can do symbol. It says if this option is passed, all options will be ignored. So if you're doing symbol, it's only going to return that one. So let's go ahead and do that. Symbol equals BTC. We'll run this. What we're going to see is we're getting that same data, but just for Bitcoin. All right, let's take a look at one more and then we'll be done for today. All right, so finally, we're going to look at getting data for just specific currencies, which they recommend using the quotes latest. And again, as we pull this up, we can see it is available on the free tier. If we go to quotes historical, which is getting past data, you can see here it is not available. It's crossed out for the free plan. So you would have to have a paid plan to access the historical data. So let's go to latest quotes. We can again see our query parameters. So again, the same three, ID, slug, and symbol. So if you're using something like Bitcoin, you can use the symbol, but if it's a more smaller currency, you may need to use the ID. And you can make the same things, convert, convert ID, um, and so forth. So let's go ahead and grab this. And we're going to do symbol, and we'll do Bitcoin. So we'll paste this in here, do our question mark again, symbol, make sure it's spelled correctly or it won't return correctly. Symbol equals Bitcoin. We'll go ahead and run. And then it'll return that data. Just like that. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.